Time to meet the men from the ministry. We're off for a trip in the Whitehall Wonderland with Norma Ronald, Ronald Baddeley, John Graham, and the men from the ministry, Richard Murdoch and Derek Guiler. The Ministry's General Assistance Office helps any department that's overloaded, and its staff work as a closely-knit team. So, when Secretary Mildred returns from a week off sick, Lennox, Brown and Lamb eagerly welcome her back. Are you sure you're fully recovered, Mildred? I thought the doctor told you to stay in bed for a fortnight and he'd call every day. Yeah, but it turned out he got it all wrong. Mum told him on the phone I'd a dry sensation. He thought she said I was a private patient. <laughs> oh, dear, what a nuisance. Well, that's what he said the third time he called. He found I was National Health. So he snatched back his medicine and signed me fit for work. <laughs> Mildred, did you take that stuff that I gave you? I tried, sir, but I couldn't get at it. Couldn't get at it? No. He said on the label, keep bottle tightly cooked. <laughs> Oh, glory. Still, you seem to be all right, I must say. Oh, yeah. I reckon the rest did me good. Yes. Well, that reminds me. I think I'll have my annual bout of flu at the end of this month. <laughs> well, there should be better by then. Oh, well, you know, sir, I'll put it in your diary. Thanks. I remember as a child, my mother gave me cod liver oil to keep coals away. She put sixpence in my piggyback each time I took a spoonful. Oh, in that. Sweet. And when your piggy was full, she gave you all the money. No, she took it to buy more cod liver oil. <laughs> what were you up to while I was away, sir? Ah, we've been helping the Arts Council. Oh? Yes, yes, they were running an exhibition of modern art at the Tate Gallery. Modern art, eh? Yes. Well, they were empty milk bottles, actually. Uh, but they would paid this artist a lot of money to arrange them artistically. Was it a success, sir? None entirely. Some idiot milkman called and didn't know it was art. <laughs> he took the lot away and left a raspberry yogurt. <laughs> Mr. Wilkins was saying in the lift you'd been involved with some ballet company. Oh, yes. Mm. Yes, yes. A new group called the Ballet Liberty. The Arts Council asked them to organise their tour. In Britain? Well, it was supposed to be. The home counties, actually, are starting in Bagshot. Unfortunately, Mr. Lamb misunderstood and sent them to Bangkok. <laughs> I must say they turned quite nasty. However, I managed to sort things out, you know. They open tomorrow at the Town Hall, Kingston. So all's well that ends well, and uh, we've no jobs left to do. <laughs> well, perhaps the permanent undersecretary will give you a few days off. Oh, a few days off, Sir Gregory. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sir Gregory. Yes. I'm here. Oh, ah, yes. Uh, do come in, Sir Gregory, won't you? Uh, uh, nice of you to creep in so unexpectedly, sir. Go cut the cackle, man. Now, have you completed that Arts Council business? Indeed, sir, yes. The ballet tour is in hand. In fact, sir, we're unexpectedly vacant. We wondered if we might have a few days off. No. Oh, well, thanks for discussing it anyway. <laughs> days off, indeed. I gave you a day off a while ago. Yes, sir. When Japan surrendered. <laughs> Some other department will need your peculiar skills before long. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't like your cough, Sir Gregory. No, I'm not very fond of it myself. <laughs> Perhaps it's all those cigars you smoke, sir. Well, I've read four books on how to give up smoking. And you've given up smoking? No, I've given up reading. Uh, oh, well, I have some medical knowledge, you know, sir. Oh, yes, yes. I did a, a first aid course during the war. Did you, Lennox Vaughan? I had to, sir. Yes, it was a high casualty rate in my area. You were in the infantry? No, I was in the catering corps. <laughs> and in my expert opinion, sir, the best way to cure a cough is to spread some goose grease on the chest. Ah, rubbish. I have my own cough cure, a Scotch cocktail. A Scotch cocktail? Then what's that? Half a glass of whiskey, with another half added. Oh. <laughs> well, that's very efficacious, I'm sure, sir, yes. But I'd also recommend 
I really would, sir. I would recommend the goose grease. You know, I come to think of it, if you know so much about medical matters, you can tackle some jobs for the Department of Health. Oh, we wouldn't say no, sir. I was going to give these assignments to Mr. Wilkins next door, but he has some trouble with his legs. Yes, every time there's work about, they go out of control and hurry him home. <laughs> well, we should be happy to take on these tasks, sir. You'll be in charge of servicing and supplying one of the big national health hospitals, Centurnius. <laughs> I see, thank you. All the details are in this file, and there must be no mistakes. We cannot afford slip-ups in the hospital area. You mean we mustn't fall down on medical grounds? <laughs> if you do, there's no doctor on earth who can save you. Uh, thank you, sir. Doesn't have much sense of humor, does he? No. Last time I saw a face like that, Lester Piggott was riding behind it. <laughs> what have you got to do for this hospital, sir? Well, let's have a look at the file and find out. Uh, ah, yes. Oh, it seems the boiler men are complaining that their shoes are damaged by hot coal and ashes. Heavy industrial boots, that's what they need. Good thinking, that, too. Thank yeah, good thinking. Thank that. Order some at once, will yes. you? And uh, we'll send them some safety pamphlets. I'll deal with that right away. Yes, now then, what else is there? Uh, oh, it seems St. Hernia's Family Planning Clinic want further supplies. <laughs> Sorry, I'm late, one. I was here, sharp at eleven. There's another job for St. Hernia's, too. It seems they have trouble with their central heating. Oh, dear. Yeah, apparently there's a big crack in one of the main pipes. It's going to need skill treatment. What sort of skill treatment? I'm suggesting they bind it up with sticky tape. Good idea. <laughs> the whole system's worn out. It should really be replaced. But with the health service so short of money, we'll have to settle for an overhaul. <laughs> Oh, lovely cup of char. Oh, thank you, Mildred. Thank you, Mildred. Oh, tastes like dishwater. Perhaps it's time we had a new tea bag. <laughs> yes, we've had that one since Christmas. And then it came second hand from Fatty Scott. Yeah, well, what do you have, sir? Oh, yeah. That stuff in the bowl. Is it glue or very old mushroom soup? Ah, ah, now that's goose grease, Mildred. I brought it in for Sir Gregory's chest. Marvellous stuff. Cures coughs and colds, just like magic. Ooh, it smells blooming horrible. Mm. Sir Gregory might prefer to keep the cough. Now, don't touch it, Mildred. You might just... Whoops. Oh, knock it over and spill it. She has knocked it over and spilt it. Oh, well, never mind. I'll mop it up later. Well, why can't you leave things alone, Mildred? Sometimes this place is like a circus. Oh, General Assistance Department, Lennox Clown, David Brown. Uh, this is Seamus O'Toole here, Boiler Foreman, Saturnius Hospital. Oh, yes, Mr. O'Toole. Well, uh, can I help you? Uh, sure, and you'd better be after helping me, or there'll be more trouble than there is already after being. Odd chap. Sounds Welsh to me. <laughs> uh, what exactly is the trouble, Mr. O'Toole? Isn't it on your orders? My boiler men have been issued with family planning pills. <laughs> what? Some of the lads aren't even married. And then what about the industrial boots you promised us? Oh, I'm afraid, Mr. Drew, there may have been a slight error. Ah, be chambers, if you're not after sorting this out at once, or even sooner, I'll take it up with the highest authority. Michael Parkinson? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, the Minister of State for Health, or even someone in the government. Yes, well, I'll see what I can do, and they... Oh, he's gone. Oh, dear me. The boiler men got family planning stuff instead of industrial boots. Well, that's not too serious. They can have their boots today. Just a minute. Yes. The, if the boiler men got the pills, the boots and pamphlets must have gone to St. Hernia's clinic. Oh, dear. If Sir Gregory hears about that, he could be rather cross. Now then, you two. He uh, has heard about it. Uh, Sir Gregory, please, now, don't jump to conclusions. The only jumping I'm going to do is down your throat, Lennox Brown. Oh. And as for you, Lamb, I've no doubt you're equally culpable. Uh, thank you, Sir Gregory, but I'm just as much to blame as he is. <laughs> oh, be quiet. I've just had a call from St. Hernia's Family Planning Clinic. They don't hang about, do they? Now, on your instructions, women seeking family planning help are being given heavy industrial boots <laughs> with attached instructions. Instructions? What do they say? This. As a precautionary measure, wear these boots. <laughs> For complete safety, boots should not be removed until all activity has ceased. <laughs> 
So I see. Women were also handed pamphlets saying, Stay out of trouble, keep an eye on the foreman. <laughs> Give us back the boots, sir. We'll put things right. Boots? The only boots you'll get will be mine when it hurts most. Let me get my hands on you. Run for it, Mother. I'll tear you to pieces. Oh, look, look out, Sir Gregor. You'll slip on the... Ah! Oh, goose grease. <laughs> oh, dear. He slipped on the goose grease. Uh, perhaps you shouldn't have brought it here. Well, it's the Sir Gregory's cough. I just wanted to give him a leg up. Well, his leg's sticking up all right, but the rest of him sort of crumples. Oh! I hadn't realized St. Hernia's Hospital was so big. Yes, it's enormous, isn't it? Yeah. I think the Eliza Lock Ward should be just down here. I heard it was the most comfortable, so I pulled a few strings, you know, to get Sir Gregory in there. Mm, I suppose it's the least we could do. A broken leg's an awful nuisance. I brought some fruit for Sir Gregory, like you said. Oh, yeah, well, I just hope he likes rhubarb. <laughs> And you've got the files on that other problem? Yes, they're all here. After we've cheered up Sir Gregory, we can go and report on the central heating. Right. Well, wait a minute. I think that's the ward. I'll just ask this lady here. Excuse me, nurse. I am uh... not a nurse. Oh. I'm the senior sister. And who said you could get out of bed? Hmm? You're in no condition to be walking about. Uh, 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 we're not patients, madam. We're from the ministry. We are here to see our colleague, Sir Gregory Pitkin. From the Ministry, eh? Yes. No doubt it was you who insisted he should go into the Eliza Lot ward. Most irregular, you know. Now, you must allow us to decide that, sister. Just tell us where to find him, please. He's in the end bed there, huddled under the bedclothes. Thank you. Come along, too. He's over here. Now, won't Sir Gregory be surprised to see us? Oh, no! Not you two. Yes, he can hardly believe his luck. <laughs> hello, Sir Gregory. Hello to you, Sir Hello. We've come to see how you're getting on. Oh, no. We're here to bring a little sunshine into your life. Uh -huh. And we've brought you some fruit. A stick of rhubarb? <laughs> what the devil can I do with this? Well... Uh, don't say another word. <laughs> you not only broke my leg... You forced the authorities to put me in this war. It's nice and sunny, Sir Gregory. And lots of charming ladies. Damn it, man! It's a maternity war! <laughs> oh, dear, is it? Well, what do you think I... Why do you think I'm hiding under the bedclothes? You'll forgive us if we leave you now, sir, but uh, we have to see the hospital secretary about St. Hernia's central heating. Uh, we've inspected the whole system. It's in an awful mess. The main pipe in the basement's cracked. If you don't leave me alone, lamb, there'll be a crack in your basement. Oh. Good grief, you've eaten all my grapes. Uh, not all of them, sir. There are two small ones left at the bottom. <laughs> Come along, too. We'll go and give them some expert advice on the central heating. Now, which way is the hospital secretary's office, that one? I'm sorry, I didn't expect to find you in here, Dr. Keene. Yes, I've borrowed the office for an hour while the secretary's out, and I've some paperwork to do. Mm, I'm not surprised. That civil servant, Sir Gregory Pitkin, I don't like the look of him. I hate the sight of him. <laughs> you old-tempered brute. Yes, I meant I'm rather concerned about his condition. Oh, it's only a broken leg, but he seems in permanent shock. Yes. As he's the top ministry man, the authorities are getting a bone expert in to look at his whole case. Oh, I see, yes. uh, We'll treat Sir Gregory according to this, sir. Uh, Specialist's advice. Very good, Dr. Keene. And uh, now, if you'll excuse me, I must go and get the beds remade. Some of the patients have been moving about. <laughs> uh, Nurse Todd, perhaps you could make some tea when this bone expert gets here. Oh, there's someone coming now. Oh, is this the hospital secretary's office? Yes, that's right. Oh, I hope I'm not late. I've been in the ward with Sir Gregory Pitkin. Ah, you're the expert, are you? And you've already made your examination? Yes, we've studied the file and inspected the break. Oh, uh, this is my colleague here, Mr. Lamb, by the way. How do you do? Two of you, eh? Oh, well, gentlemen, I'm glad you're here. What advice can you offer? Well, it's a nasty crack. It's a bad break, isn't it? Yeah, but we don't think it's all that serious in itself. We suggest you hold it together with sticky tape. <laughs> sticky tape, yes, and get it back into use right away. Sticky tape? I'm glad you agree. We're more concerned with the overall condition. In our opinion, the whole system's in an awful mess. As bad as that? Oh, shocking. Shocking, shocking. All the joints we looked at were loose. <laughs> And many essential pipes are hopelessly third. Well, 
I had no idea. Things were so serious. What can we do? You could try lagging round the bottom. <laughs> lagging? Plenty of stout wadding up all apertures. <laughs> well, uh, if, um, if you insist... But before you do that, you'd better insert a long-handled brush. <laughs> Clear out all the clogged tubes. Then just flush out and seal up the cracks. Yes. <laughs> and if that doesn't work, forget it. Forget it? But we can't. I mean, the trouble is, the geezer's much too old. <laughs> he shouldn't have been allowed to go on as long as it's. Yes, I'm very sorry to say that my colleague's right. The old boiler's had it. Yes, if the patch-up job doesn't work, I'm afraid it's the knacker's yard. <laughs> We've got to be ruthless. Look, gentlemen, if you'll forgive me, uh, I'd like to make a quick phone call before we discuss this any further. Oh, yes, by all means. Carry on, yes. Yes, uh, I don't think he's realized that the problem's quite so serious. Hello? Hello? Uh, this is Dr. Keene. Yes, I, I've got two men here posing as doctors. One looks mad, and the other is mad. <laughs> Send down a couple of strong male nurses and a pair of straitjackets, and ask Dr. Campbell from the psychiatric unit to come here at once. Nurse. Uh, yes, Dr. Campbell. Uh, the psychiatric unit tell me you've got two men here who may be lunatics. Uh, yes, Dr. Campbell. Uh-huh. Uh, they're both in there, still in their straight jackets, but we've given them sedatives. Oh, fine, Lassie, fine. I'll go in and test them. Uh, you can tell Sister Nightingale to come and see me, will you? Yes, sir. Ah, oh, hello, gentlemen. Now, I'm Dr. Campbell. And I'm here to help you. And I don't want you to worry about anything. Don't ramble, Campbell. (laughs) Just tell us why we've been kept in this room. And why we're wearing these funny jackets. The nurse said they were to keep us warm, but I'm not entirely convinced. Uh, No, no, just relax. And I want you to tell me why you came to St. Hernia's today. Well, for one thing, there was the rhubarb. What's that? Oh, yes, yes, of course. The rhubarb... But uh, I'm told you showed an interest in one of the patients. Well, in a way, we felt guilty. What with the ballet going to Bangkok and the woman getting big boots and the boiler men taking the pill. (laughs) Oh, come along, man. We all feel guilty about these things. We have to learn to accept them. (laughs) Well, that's what we're always telling him, but he flies into these rages. I mean, that's where the trouble starts. Nervous tension, you see. Uh, You're anxious to contribute to medical matters. I have some medical knowledge, yes. I fall back on goose grease. (laughs) Goose grease? That's what I fall back on. Goose grease? Mm. Oh, goose grease, yes, yes, naturally. Oh, nuss, nuss. They're worse than I thought. We can't stay here, you know. There's so many problems, apart from the ballet liberty and the pamphlets and that fool O'Toole. It's obvious something's cracked, and then there's the pipes, you see, and the family planning, and there may not be enough sticky tape to go round. (laughs) I think that explains everything, Rockham. Oh, indeed, indeed. You wanted to see me, Dr. Campbell. Come in, Sister Nightingale. Uh, we shall have to certify these two men at once. They're quite, quite unbalanced. These two? They're the two men from the Ministry who were nosing round here earlier, checking the central heating. They're from the Ministry? Oh, oh, oh dear me. <laughs> then they're entitled to be unbalanced. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, I suppose we shall have to let them go. Awful experience. Mm. Oh, you must be glad to be back in the office. You won't go to that hospital again in a hurry. Oh, we'll have to, Mildred. Sir Gregory looks forward to our visits. Yes, I've raided the petty cash and bought him some bananas. Nearly half a pound. No, Sir Gregory's left the area, sir. They let him out. What a broken leg, after all, just a bad sprain. He's got some plaster on, and he's hobbling around on crutches. Oh, that is good news. We can eat the bananas ourselves. <laughs> yes, all right, too, but don't throw the skin on the floor. Someone might step on it. Don't worry, I'll pick it up when I go to lunch. Anything happened while we were away, Mildred? The Arts Council rang. Mm? You should have sent that ballet company to Kingston Town Hall. Well, we did. Kingston on Thames. 
You sent them to Kingston, Jamaica. <laughs> oh, glory. Thank heavens it's only public money. <laughs> the Arts Council say you better find them a London hall to dance in. That's easy. The new Hampstead Theatre's free. Uh, I read about it in the paper. We'll send the company there. Well done, too. Well done there. Thank you. Uh, write to them at once, Mildred, and confirm it, will you? That wasn't too serious, was it? Uh, no, sir. Uh, uh, but uh, there was one other little mix-up. Uh, it seems you had to supply St. Ternia's with some new equipment uh, for the surgeons under Mr. Gardner. Yes, well, we sent the... Surgeons? Mr. Gardner? Yeah. I thought they wanted equipment for the gardeners. Oh, that explains it. The surgeons are a bit upset because they were expected to do their operations with scythes and spades. Oh, <laughs> dear. Are the doctors very angry? Yeah, and some of the patients are a bit cut up and all. <laughs> yes, yeah, so well, let's just hope that Sir Gregory doesn't hear about this. Oh, silly of me to say that, really. Come in, Sir Gregory. Hold the door, will you? Sorry about your crutch, Sir Gregory, and it's awful to see you plastered. Don't say anything, then. Just let me say my piece and go. Very well, sir. St. Hernia's are short of an operating theatre. Indeed, sir. Uh, one of their surgeons was about to remove an appendix when he was handed a pick and shovel. <laughs> he was so furious, he flung them through the window and then smashed the place up. Oh, dear me. Well, it sounds as if there's been some incompetence somewhere. They have a special operating session tomorrow night when top European doctors are to watch a British surgeon at work. Find a hospital that has a spare theatre and let them know at once. Leave it to us, Sir Gregory. We have a list of facilities here. Well, mind there are no slip-ups. Uh, open the door for me. Yes, yes Brown. Of course, sir. Certainly, sir. Splendid that you're out of hospital, sir. Yes. We were coming to visit you, sir, and we bought you some bananas. Oh, uh, that reminds me, there's a skin on the floor somewhere. Watch how you go, sir, and you yes. don't want to... Yeah! Oh, slip on it. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Sir Gregory, let me clump up your pillars for you. Uh, cheer up, sir. At least you haven't any more legs to break. Oh, did you have to get me into this ward? Well, sir, we sense that you weren't happy in that maternity ward. I'm even less happy here. This is the geriatric ward. <laughs> oh, perhaps they think you've hurt your geriatric. <laughs> Well, never mind, Sir Gregory. We have good news on the work front. Now, they wanted an operating theatre for tonight, didn't they? Fortunately, one of the city hospitals is able to help. St. Vitus is. <laughs> We've arranged the operation to take place there. Well, thank heaven you got something right. Ah, here's Dr. Keene. Hello, Doctor. Good evening, Sir Gregory. Hello, Doctor. You remember us? <laughs> I remember you two like I remember my first case of poisoning. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm leaving now, Sir Gregory. I have to assist uh, one of our surgeons. He's operating in front of some European doctors. Oh, so I heard. My people found him a theatre. Yes, and quite handy, too. It shouldn't take long to get up to Hampstead. But uh, I'll have to dash. I'm late already. Uh, good chap, that. Always warms his hands before examining you. <laughs> uh, just a minute. Did he say Hampstead? Yeah, Hampstead. That's right. But you said you'd found an operating theatre in the city. Uh, yes, at St. Vitus's. But something's happening at Hampstead. You sent that ballet company to the Hampstead Theatre. That's not what you told me, Mr. Lamb. You said that was the theatre for the operating team. Good grief. Mildred, too. You haven't mixed up the theatres. The Hampstead Ordnance are expecting to watch a ballet. Uh, I think I'll take a spot of leave once. Stay where you are. <laughs> there are doctors in the city waiting to watch an operation. And you've switched the performers. <laughs> Welcome to Look Out, our magazine of the arts and sciences. At the Hampstead Theatre tonight, the newly formed Ballet Liberty began a season of original ballets based on Greek legends. Our critic, Harold Hobhouse. How can one start to describe what we saw at the Hampstead Theatre tonight? I'd never seen anything like it. A card at the side of the stage gave us the ballet's title, The Single Word Tonsillectomy. <laughs> no doubt 
the name of some ancient Greek goddess. The dancers wore long robes and masks, almost like surgeons. <laughs> Clearly, a return to the early days of classical drama. And it was enthralling to see the ritual chanting of ancient Greek phrases like scalpel, scalpel, and swab, swab. A truly enthralling experience. Small wonder that a packed house gave the performers a huge ovation as they moved on to their encore, a bold new piece called Appendectomy. <laughs> An evening which I can only describe as enthralling. Uh, thank you, Harold Hobhouse. Uh, you'd better sit down now. <laughs> and uh, so to the first of our science items. A party from the European Medical Assembly were at St. Vitus's Hospital this evening to watch new operating techniques practiced by the eminent British surgeon, Mr. Lance Freedy. Our science correspondent, James Simpleton, reports. I think the European doctors were surprised by what they saw at St. Vitus's. I know I was. For a start, Mr. Freely's team have discarded the traditional operating theatre garb, and instead they wear tunics and tights, and they move around on tiptoe, no doubt to avoid waking the patient. <laughs> Mr. Freely seems also to have rejected the knife in favour of some sort of faith healing. As the patient lay on a slab, six girls danced around him, occasionally placing garlands of flowers round his podium. And uh, eventually he rose and joined them. Indeed, he grabbed one of the nurses in the sort of embrace you can't normally get on the National Health. <laughs> so it seems that surgery is out and dance therapy is in. Afterwards, I asked one of the team if we'd witnessed a big breakthrough, and he said that we might have done, as his tights had split. <laughs> I don't believe it, Lennox Brown. I don't see how it can possibly have been a success. Sir Gregory, please, don't try to get out of it. No. Now, it, it is a success. The European medical people were highly impressed. They saw a patient cured by dance therapy and free movement. They want to pump money into our health service to enable us to develop dance therapy. Dance therapy rubbish. It's true, sir. They believe it can be used to cure anything. They're trying it out in selected hospitals. Come along, Sir Gregory. Get out of that bed, but man. I can't get out of bed, sister. One leg's sprained and then the other one's broken. Nonsense. You only think they are. Now, I'll help you up. Ooh. We're going to practice the new dance therapy. Let me go. I can't dance in this condition. Of course you can, man. Now, here we go. Hey. And a one, two, three, hop. Ooh. Oh, look out, Sir Gregory. The floor's highly polished. You might just... Yeah! Fall over. Oh, dear. He has fallen over. Oh. Oh, glory. He better run a bit. He's still got one good arm. Yes, when I get out, I'll try to get out. 